So the Canon SL2 and the Canon M50 are two of the best budget options on the market right now for content creators, YouTubers, and anybody that wants to shoot great photos and great videos. But which one is the better buy? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the pros and cons of each of them coming up. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of YouTube strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out all the products we talk about as well as bonus accessories and things like that. Let's jump into the video. So we've been getting a ton of questions in the Think Media community about this very subject. And fortunately, I've extensively been able to test both of these cameras quite a bit. We picked up the Canon SL2 maybe a little over a half a year ago and were able to test video with my wife Sonia and I. I was able to take it on a trip to Boise and kind of vlog with it and get some test video footage and then also use it for photography, whether up in Washington or in other locations. And it is a phenomenal camera producing great results. And then the same is true with the M50. We've been using that for the last couple months. We were testing video footage at a skate park, also vlog style footage, and shooting a lot of photography with it as well. And again, the performance, the results are incredible. So if you are conflicted and, and wondering if you could make the wrong choice when it comes to these two cameras, I wanna just give you some relief. I don't think you can go wrong with each of them. You know, with whichever one you have, they're incredible cameras and they both create incredible results. However, let's talk about some of the distinctions if maybe you haven't pulled the trigger on the camera yet so you can make the best decision for you. And the first thing to note is that they actually have a ton of similarities. You know, one is a DSLR camera, which means that it has a mirror in between the sensor. It makes a click noise when you are shooting it. It's kind of a different style than a mirrorless camera. The reason it's called a mirrorless camera is because there's no mirror, right? And so the sensor is right there. It means the lenses and the way the camera works is a little bit different. But that being said, they both have flip screens to selfie, which is essential, right, for creating content for YouTubers and even if you just wanna shoot selfie photos with a group and whatnot. They both have microphone inputs, which is super important if you wanna have superior audio for your content. And they both have, you know, again, great ability to take photos. They both shoot 1080p video at 60 frames a second if you wanna do slow motion. And so there's a ton of similarities, but let's talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of each of them and their differences. And the first one to note is the price. You know, at the end of the day, the M50 does have superior free features, but it's also more expensive. Right now at the time of shooting this video, you could pick up the Canon SL2 body for right around $550 here in the US. And if you get it with the kit lens, which I would recommend if you're just starting, it's gonna come in at $600. And so that is, probably the best value I believe on the market right now for a solid camera with a mic input, you know, that's you're ready to go right out of the box to shoot with it. But the M50 happens to be on sale at the time of shooting this video. And so I don't know if the price will stay here, but right now you can pick up an M50 for $699. $599 on the SL2, $699 on the Canon M50. And so that puts them pretty close together and makes me lean a little bit more towards the M50. Saying that, the MSRP on the M50 is around $900, $899 with the kit lens. And so that puts a little bit of a wider gap. So definitely check out the most recent prices in the description below, because that might have a bearing on your decision. So now let's talk about the advantages of the SL2, and then we'll touch on the advantages of the M50. And so there are a couple reasons why you might still want to gravitate towards the SL2, and one is actually gonna be the body style itself. It is a little bit larger, as it is a DSLR, and it actually gives you a little bit more to hold on to and to grip. Now, the M50 still has a great feel in my hands. It's great to shoot with. If smaller is better, then you'd wanna go with the M50. But if you do want more of a robust body as it is a DSLR, then the SL2 could be a great option. The second thing is the fact that you have more lenses and you have native EF lenses right on the SL2. What does that mean? It means that 
Right now, Canon actually, I believe, has the widest selection of lenses out of any brand on the marketplace. So you've got everything from their high-end L glass all the way down to so many different options um, of, of lens choice. And because there are so many lenses on the market too, that means you can get EF lenses a lot of times used or refurbished or on eBay at a great savings. And so the fact that they go directly onto the SL2 means that it kind of has a lens choice advantage. On the M50's case, Canon has not made very many mirrorless lenses yet. There's still some great lenses and pretty much all you need for creating content. But if you wanted to use the EF lenses on the M50, they're called EFM for the mirrorless mount. They do have a converter. However, that's gonna run you another $100 to $200 to start accessing some of those other lenses. So consider that. And when you use that converter, it makes the camera a little bit more bulky because you've got the converter and then you start adding the lens lenses. And so again, that's kind of an advantage of the SL2. The other thing that is a big advantage of the SL2 is it does have a larger battery, which means you can shoot more photos and more videos without changing the battery out. Now, typically, no matter what camera you invest in and in almost any brand, if you're serious about creating content, you probably want to get some extra batteries anyways. And so because the SL2 lasts longer, maybe you could get away without getting an extra battery. And if you get some extra batteries for the M50, which actually doesn't have the best battery life, that could run you just like $25 if you buy a third-party brand with good reviews on Amazon, and we'll link to one of them in the description below. Now, disclaimer, a lot of times brands will say you should only use the OEM batteries, the batteries they recommend, and if you do that, that's gonna cost quite a bit more when it comes to the M50 getting a few extra batteries. And so, again, those are a few of the advantages of the SL2 that I see. But now let's talk about the M50 because I think it really begins to stand out with some of the features. One of the things that both of these cameras have in common is they both have dual pixel autofocus, which Canon is famous for, and it's a really amazing feature. What that essentially means is that it focuses fast, it's really good at face tracking, and that's why these cameras are so good for especially shooting video and for getting tack sharp photos. Because you can put out your selfie screen, put it on face tracking, tap your face, and you're pretty much good to go. If you're shooting YouTube videos by yourself at home or whatever you're doing, set it up, get it on face tracking, and you can trust the camera to really stay in focus. However, a huge difference between these two cameras is that the autofocus points and the area of autofocus, if you can imagine, there is like an area on which the sensor is pulling focus, and then there's how many regions of the sensor that can have uh, different points of autofocus. The SL2 only has nine. The M50 has 99, and certain lenses bring it all the way up to 143 autofocus points. So what that means is that it can be more granular, more specific, and it's just gonna be better at maybe not hunting for focus because, if you will, the SL2 kind of has like larger regions of autofocus, whereas the M50 50, it's much more specific, and so you, wherever you touch, wherever you tap, you know that you're gonna have things in focus fast, they're gonna be solid, and especially as you get into photo mode, the M50 massively outperforms the SL2 when it comes to those autofocus points. That's not to say that, again, the SL2 can't perform well, it still creates great content, but that is a big advantage the M50 has. Additionally, the M50 adds even more features like eye tracking. That's a new feature they added, so that makes it even better where it can lock on to the subject you're trying to shoot's eye and then track their eye for shooting photos and in different scenarios. And we tested this out when we were at the skate park and it performs great. We actually put a very fast lens on the camera with the converter that had very shallow depth of field. And in a scenario like that, if your autofocus isn't tack sharp, it could ruin the photo. So again, the AF, the autofocus on the M50 is killer. And as we're talking about photos, the other thing that you get into is how many frames per second can the camera shoot? Meaning, if you put it in burst mode and you hold down the shutter, it'll go right? The SL2 can do five frames per second and the M50 can do 10 frames per second in photo mode. So again, you've got superior performance over on the M50 when it comes to photos. And 
One of the reasons for all of the features we talked about so, so far is the difference in the processors. So the processor is inside of your camera. It has to do with how fast the camera is running. It has to do with the performance of even a little bit of the image quality, a little bit of the ISO, the low light performance. And so the SL2 has a newer processor, the Digic 7 processor from Canon, but the M50 being a newer camera has the Digic 8 processor. So again, that's one of the reasons why it could be shooting faster bursts. It can you know, be handling more in the buffer as you're taking photos and things like that. So again, another advantage of the M50. Now let's talk about video. Both of these cameras can shoot 1080p at 60 frames a second. Now, why would you want that? Well, when you shoot at 60 frames a second, and let's say you were editing your project in 30 frames, that means you can have 50% slow motion and have things be perfectly smooth. So that's a cool advantage if, if you want to either shoot in 60 frames for some other reason, or if you want to do some filmmaking, do some slow motion content in your vlogs, whatever that is, you can do that with both cameras. However, the M50 adds 4K video to the mix at 24 frames a second. Now, I wouldn't actually suggest that this actually be a deal breaker between making a decision because the 4K video on the M50 is kind of cool, but it leaves a lot to be desired. You actually lose the dual pixel autofocus uh, in that mode. It goes to contrast base, so it doesn't nearly track as fast. And it also crops in quite a bit, meaning you, know, you think that the shot's nice and wide, but once you press record, it crops in another like 16% or so on the image. So the 4K is still a great benefit, and even in our tests, if you have a wide lens, if you don't necessarily even use autofocus, maybe you want to uh, shoot an interview and just lock the camera down. If you use it smart and strategic, the 4K is usable, but I would say for the average person, it's kind of cool, but it's not quite there yet. But again, it's still a superior advantage, the fact you could access it. So that is nice to have in the M50. And it also offers 120 frames a second at 720p resolution. So that's a little bit smaller, but one of the things we love about that here at Think Media is the fact that a lot of us need to be creating content for Instagram, for Facebook, you know, square videos on Instagram. And we were shooting with this at the skate park. With 120 frames, that is four times slow motion once you put that into editing. And so it looks really beautiful. It performed really well still. still. I wish the resolution was at least 1080 for that, but even at 720, it is a nice additional feature that again, makes me see the advantage of the M50. Now, talking about photography again, the cameras have a lot of similar settings in the sense that they have similar creative modes. They both have a beginner mode that'll help you if you're just getting started, learn how uh, shutter speed works, how aperture works. So that's a cool uh, features that they have in common. And uh, of course, both of them also shoot raw photos. Now, why would you wanna shoot raw photos? Um, when you shoot raw, you're able to control a lot of things in post. I don't know about you, but if you've ever taken photos and they were too dark or your white balance wasn't set right, so someone's skin was all orange or was all blue and things just weren't quite right, when you shoot raw, you can take those photos into editing, into post-production with like Lightroom or with Photoshop and fix everything. Like you can literally, like you maybe didn't even take that great of photos, but by the time you take them into post-processing, they can totally be recovered. So if you want to progress your photography game, I definitely recommend shooting RAW. And again, both cameras have RAW, but one cool thing about the M50 is that they added a new compressed RAW feature. Because one of the downsides of shooting RAW photos is they're huge. Like they'll start eating up your hard drive space, they take up a lot more space. And so that compressed RAW still lets you adjust your white balance, adjust your exposure without taking up all the file space. So that's something I love about that camera. And then also when it comes to photos, remember a DSLR has a lens to click away. That's why you hear that shutter noise when you're shooting photos. Because this is a mirrorless camera, it does have a shutter noise uh, in some settings, but it also has a silent mode. And so if you want to shoot photos, again, you, you want to shoot some weddings and you don't want to you know, be distracting. You hear those photo noises or you're doing some production in like a, a church setting or some other environment where you want to be silent huge advantage of the M50 there as well. 
So from my point of view, those are some of the biggest standout similarities and differences of these two cameras. And as far as my final thoughts go, if I was gonna make the decision today, I would find a way to get an M50. I mean, that is definitely, I have fallen in love with this camera. I love traveling with it. I love how small it is. I love how fun it is to use. I love the features. It's, it's just great. I should mention both have touch screens, so you can you know tap the screen, touch the focus. They're both fun to use and easy to use. I just love the M50. You know, I think that if, if it is a budget decision, don't feel bad about getting the SL2. It is an amazing camera. I love the SL2 as well. And if, if that's your limit, get the SL2. If you can squeeze the extra budget to get the M50, also considering that you might wanna invest in that uh, lens adapter so you can get a wider range of lenses that you wanna invest in some extra batteries, I'd recommend you get extra batteries no matter which one you choose. So definitely budget it out, but if, at the end of the day, if you were trying to choose between one or the other, I would say go with the M50. You have newer technology. It is a solid camera. It's been tested not just extensively by me, but by so many people on YouTube. A lot of people love this camera. And so I think that that's where I would go if it was between those two. But I would love to hear from you in the comments, which one do you think stands out? Which one are you leaning towards after this video? And I know there's a lot of you in the Think Media community that know the specs of these cameras. What are maybe some things I didn't even touch or I didn't even mention? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and I'd love to connect with you and have a conversation. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you wanna check out other videos in our best equipment for YouTube series, click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon.